significant height advantage, four inches for Wynn, and the reach advantage there as well, an eight-inch reach advantage for the young man from Kansas, our referee for this All one, right, gentlemen, Mike Belcher. First round. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Hit him, let's go. We are underway, third fight of the night. Wynn in the red shorts. Reangling in the blue. Wynn straight away with a right high kick. And that's one thing that stands out when you watch the tape of Wynn. Very, very fast kick. Fast everything, to be honest. But both guys have. It's a nice heavy low kick. Yes, Stephen Wynn, a very technical striker. And Phil Relayan, a little bit looser, a little bit more unorthodox, unorthodox. Kind of awkward in some ways, the way that he holds his guard. Does leave him open to punches, but it also allows him to throw those punches from strange angles that you're not used to seeing. Yeah, and that 18th reach disadvantage, I mean, that's, that's going to be hard to deal with tonight. Wynn says Fortis has made him so much better than he was before he started there. 18 guys on that Fortis roster in the UFC, so a lot of talent to work with. Yeah, they always say you're only as good as the people that you train with, and certainly down there, not only are you training with world-class people, because as you say, 18 members of the UFC roster train there. Safe side is just such a fantastic mind for it. Every time I watch him corner people, I'm just, I'm blown away. I, I'm really, really impressed with how he handles these situations and the tough situations. It's all well and good when your fighter goes out there and is uh, dominating, but to see the advice that he gives, gives to his fighters after a hard round, that's when he really gets my respect. Again, working on that leg is win. Yeah, and it's uh, it's win that's pushing forward. It's win that's pushing forward and closing the distance. It needs to be the other way around, really. Valayang needs to be the one trying to put win on the back foot. He's got to get in the pocket. He's got to get on the What's inside. But standing out, backing up against the fence, whilst he can catch it, it's not impossible, as we just saw it there. It's not the perfect game plan. Stephen Wynn just so good at staying tight and staying technical. He doesn't load up his punches, he doesn't wing them, but they land with power. His last fight, I mean, it was just a perfect... ...place, straight Fingers. right hand. You saw that, like, that face plant KO uh, in the feature before this fight. Just an incredible win. And, and you know, shows the power that he has in that right hand without having to really wind it up. And just steps out of that single leg takedown attempt with ease. Relaying in coming in, a plus 230 underdog. One of the biggest on the night. All five of his professional fights have been since 2020, so not a ton of experience for him. No, I mean, one year. One year, I mean, that's nothing. This kid's a baby. But that is the kind of strength of schedule that you want when you start your career. You want to be busy. You want to be in there. You want to be getting experience. And the more you fight, the better you get. It's in the training camps when you make those improvements. So, yeah, only one year into his pro career. He's had a good schedule. And he's doing okay here. Obviously. And, and when he watches, yeah, when he watches tape, you can actually see evolution uh, from fight to fight. I mean, that's one of the things that happens early in your career is you make big changes yeah. every single time you come out there. And early on, you know, he was kind of holding his head, you know, up and, and allowing, you know, a lot of shots to come in. I've definitely seen some improvement in his stand-up, for sure. Talking about Relay Yang being a plus 230 dog. The lot moved before this one, Yanni, huh? And there was a lot of late money that came in on the Steven Wynn side. In fact, pushed him up to a minus 400 favorite. So the break even there is 80% compared to him having opened less than a minus 200 favorite. Big difference. A lot of money to see that huge of a movement. So we go from minus 200 to open to minus 400 for Steven Wynn as the favorite right before this fight. <laughs> Under a minute to go here in the first round. Steven Wynn, Wynn Theo Relange. Wynn just doing a, so, such a good job of staying composed and keeping this fight right in the range where he wants it to be, which is that long-range boxing where he can use his height advantage. He can still sneak some kicks in there, but Relange really having to uh, try to close the distance here strongly to do so. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, backing up and skirting around the perimeter of the octagon. It's not what you want to do. You're the shorter guy. Actually... With respect, he seems to be the slower guy as well. So he's going to go forward. Going to get on the inside. Chipping away on little kicks. 
That's a little better, but you know, those little kinks, they just hit the past the shots. There's not really much on them. We talk about the lack of experience for Elaine Yang, only a pro for a year since 2020, but this is by far the strongest and most experienced point he's far. It certainly is, and you know, one of the things that Relay Yang could be doing a better job of in this round is using his jab. He's got to start getting, you know, fighting behind the jab and putting together, together some combinations to close that distance. Hey, look, you gotta mix it up, man. You're not mixing it up and you are waiting. How you feeling? Yeah. All right, come on, man. You gotta mix it up. You gotta throw some more stuff. You're in the UFC. All right, yeah. mix it up. So you lost the first round. That means you're going to throw two or three punches to together. Two or three punches together, not only one. Two or three punches. Start mixing levels. I need you to wrestle a little bit more when you get in there. Dry, okay? Yeah. Three, three right hands, and he's taking them. So we need to add on here. Use the front kick too, you understand? Use the front kick as a feeler. <coughs> stop letting him hit your fucking leg. Does it hurt? Do you need any ice on it? No. Okay. Stop letting him hit it. All it takes is one of those fucking calf kicks, you hear me? So, just get busy. Stay on the hands. Add on, add on. Let's go. I need volume. Let's go, coach. Hands. Safe sound. Once again, coaching up Steven Wynn. A lot of fighters from Fortis MMA have made their way through the Contender Series. Certainly, Stephen Wynn's right, family brooding him on. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Come on, let's go! As they're having a watch party not far away from here. And there was great corner work on both sides. The corner of Relayang saying, listen, you got to put combinations together. Two, three, can't throw singular shots. Certainly not at this level, and then also... Given the stylistic matchup of these two, when you look at the frames and the length and all the other things that we mentioned, that's nice work. Well done, gets the turn down. Look at that win straight back up. Yeah, Relay and trying to do exactly what his quarter asked him to do, make them some takedowns, some level changes, and start stringing together longer combinations. But interestingly, Saves said the same thing. He wanted, yeah. he wanted to, Steve to add on longer combinations and use that front kick as a feeler. He also said stop taking those leg kicks as well. Yes. Because for the people that don't know them, that's yeah. never taken them. If it hits the peroneal nerve, you're going to have an nice issue. Job, you see the fight with uh, Chito Vera and Sugar Sean O'Malley. Mm -hmm. You hit that nerve, leg goes dead, down you go. Fight can be over. And that does seem to be the one area where Relay Yang has the advantage. He's landed 13 Ooh. kicks to that leg. Yeah, Wayne does have some redness on that lead calf. Oh, Ooh. he's going to have some redness on that chin after that combo. <laughs> we found the mark there several times. I hear the coaching coming from his corner. So telling him, as he did in between rounds, as you alluded to, Laura, longer combination. Steve is in control of this fight right now. He's fighting well. You know, he's doing good work. He's doing great things. Um, and what I'm about to say might be a little controversial, but this is his second time here on the continent. If he wants to make an impression, and he wants to achieve what he came here to do, which is win a contract, he needs this. He needs more uh, a sense of urgency, more excitement. He's got to go for it. So far, whilst he's ahead, and he should be with the physical attributes, you know, put a show on. Let's go for it. You know, that, that's what we're here to do. You're here to impress Dana White and get a contract. Can't just... Pits a patter away. Yeah, there's no doubt he's winning this fight, but as you say, Michael, yeah. the show is a different beast. And in order to walk out of here with the UFC contract, you need to get something extra on that performance. And more of that uh, would be would be something Stephen Lynch is about to do. Yeah, I'm not hating. You know, he's winning. Oh, he's doing a great job. Yeah, no, yeah, and he looks very technically proficient. Nice level change by relaying. Ah, look at that. Finished it perfectly. Look at that. Turned him off the fence. So he can't use that to get back up. This is huge for Relay. Oh, nice. That's even bigger for Wynn. Turned it perfectly. Used his momentum. And the scramble gets top position half guard and is about to go to elbow city. Riding that elbow in the face of Relay. Ah, full mount against the fence. He's got the neck. Okay, here, team. Three submission wins, by the way, for winning his career. Two of those have been guillotines. 
I'm a little bit surprised that he let Relaying up there. He's got such a good ground game, but clearly, I mean, head on the feet, picking him apart. But, you know, as you say, Michael, there's just missing a little bit of that killer instinct to find the finish. And for Relaying, I would love to see him get behind his jab. He's throwing a lot of looping punches. You know, you, when you're fighting a, long, a longer, taller fighter, you got to make your punches as long as you possibly can and really get that jab out there. I think he can make him as long as he wants and still not find the money at this point. They can't eat. He's a big disadvantage. He need a stick on the end of his arm. Oh, combo landed there by win as we are under a minute to go here in the second round. Yeah, listen, we're talking all win, but, you know, Relaying's keeping him honest and he's doing some work and he's firing back and he's he's hitting the take down here and there as well. So, you know, Relaying's not doing bad, but as we can see, Steve Wynn is clearly in the driver's seat of this fight. Bigger sure. takedowns in this Steve. fight, both of them by Relaying. <laughs> as he continues to try to Work on that lower leg and win. Yeah, listen, uh, I mean, to use an English expression, what you want to do is you want to go out there and you want to batter your opponent silly. That's not what he's doing right now. He's picking him apart. He's doing well. He's very technical. It's nice. But it's almost like a sparring session to a certain degree. You know? Take some chances. Go for it. Ten seconds. Just, just empty the tank is what he should be doing right now with respect. Stevie, watch your fingers, all right? Watch your fingers. Alright, let's take a, look, take a look at some of these replays. There you see Wen landing a really nice combination as relaying uh, backs up and then a right from Wen. I mean, that's a punch that has sat guys down in the past. I'm very impressed with the uh, with the chin of relaying and Wen again just continuing to find the mark, but not enough to get the knockdown, not enough to get the knockout at this point. Two, and then after you hit him with a two, add on. With just a jab or a hit. You understand? I know he's counting, but he's counting one shot. Just stay tight. You're hitting him with two and you're rocking him, but you're just letting, you're letting him hang in there, right? After you hit him with the right hand, and you hit him with the right hand every time. You got the time, you got the spacing. Stop letting him kick you and shit and doing this shit. Just fucking do your job. You understand? You understand? Throw fucking round, he's still here. So let's finish. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The UFC Hall of Fame induction ceremony returns to UFC Fight Pass on Thursday. The class of 2020, including one of the greatest of all time, George's George St. Pierre, right, will take their rightful Third place in the UFC Hall of Fame. Fight. Fight. Right here on the UFC Fight Pass. It's going to be cool to see George St. Pierre finally get in official to the Hall of Fame. But we be intoxicated. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I I'm actually wondering, Michael, if you and St. Pierre are the same person. Because really? He essentially said to Stephen Wynn exactly what you were saying on me. Well, you know, intellectually, I have been known as a genius on occasion. And people say he's got a very smart mind, so maybe not to look up because I'm just way better looking. But in terms of intelligence level, you know, there's hope for him. You're the first genius I know who's been a genius on occasion, you know by the way. <laughs> I've not seen Wynn with it right there. Crank up the volume a ton here just yet. He's such a, a technical, pretty fighter that you know, it can sometimes be hard for those guys to switch it in and just make it a dog fight, make it dirty, make it ugly, and switch into that mode. But everything he's doing is so technically you know, perfect, and he is winning. He's winning these exchanges, so I think it's hard to kind of flip that switch when you maybe don't feel like you need to. Really nice takedown. So, yeah. Relaying's, you know, he's pushing hard. He's doing what he can. He's a little high. He's going to fall off in a second. Nice adjustment, actually, to get him back up there. But, uh, yeah, listen, to win, the, the problem is Relaying isn't no walk in the park. You know, he's still swinging, so that's giving him cause for concern. So it's easy to say stand there in the pocket and just go for it. You can get caught. And he's aware of that. So that's what's making him just a little hesitant to to go for the finish like we're wanting him to do so. But, uh, you know, that's what he's here to do at the end of the day. You do have to take some risks. This is the content. If this was the UFC, you good? he'd be trending towards, you know, a to victory right now. There. But that's not enough here. Another low blow here is... 
Relay Yang takes a minute. Stand up, walk it out. Relay Yang has gone through multiple fight camps throughout his short professional Jones, career. Jacks Wing, Sanford hey, MMA, now gloves. it's Keep AKA. It so right, this is his first full go, fight fight. camp. AKA. We are back in action here in the third round, just over three minutes to go. Steve does have a nice right hand, but he lets it go and he cracks. You know, you, you can see the power that he generates. And he is good to watch in terms of technicalities, how he throws. Very well trained. Oh, he's got great work, footwork. He's finding the mark. It's just a matter of following up those punches. Like right there. Come in. Continue to continue that combination. Land another two, more, two or three more shots. Get relaying up against the cage and look to finish the Mm. His last fight, a 30 second knockout against Jorge Juarez and LFA. Stop time! And I think he got him in the eye there. You stay over there. And he was warned as well. Steven! Go over Belchon there. did warn him about the fingers earlier, so. Kind of interested to see what he'll do. You got time. You got time. Look it up. And I know John Anik says that Keith Peterson is no nonsense. Oh. But okay. I will take my belt yes. no nonsense. Ready and to put that up against Keith Peterson. I always expect him day. to be guarding hey, the face of Mordor. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Close your hands. He gives me nightmares. John, bring it in. Both of you, keep your hands closed. All right? <laughs> the gates of Mordor. That's pretty good. That's the nerd. Oh, that's a lot of the rings reference. Took me, is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Took me a second. <laughs> I thought you were a genius. I am a genius. I knew it. Oh. Lord of the Rings. She's not my bag, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nice uppercut there from Relaying. Split the guard of wind, but he ate it well. <laughs> I'm going to by them. Hello. Relaying, cranking up the volume yet. Yeah, Try to bring a flying knee in there. and Yeah, God bless him. You know, he's still trying. You know, the reality is he's outmatched. Yeah, and he's 90 seconds away from losing a decision victory. Yeah, but he tried. You know, sometimes it's early in his career. He's 5-0. and all. He'll learn from this. And who knows, maybe in a year or two we see him back here. It's not the end of the road. It's only his first year. You know, honestly, maybe a little too soon to be here. The problem is he's a victim of his own success. He's looked so good in his other fights. He's catching people's attention. That's potentially the next best thing. Stop, we'll see. Oh, come on. Stay over there. Right there. Over here. Stay right here. Let's take a look. Ah, oh, yeah. Fingers out. <laughs> You got time. You got time. Work it out. Doesn't seem to be too bad for when is he? Stay in your corner. He has his eye open, which is always a good you sign. Did? Sometimes you scratch the cornea such that you can't yeah. even open it again. He's, he's not even really blanking it, so. One point. Oh. Ooh. One wow. point. One point. I'm going to go out on a limb now and say he's definitely <laughs> lost. <laughs> Listen, he's got a little bit of time left. He's seen some close hands. Let's go. Highly unlikely. He was losing his round regardless. So, you know, he's still out there looking for a finish. And you know, he's going to get a point point taken off. He just said, okay, screw it. Let's go for it. And you never know. Like, uh, we came back on Saturday night. He said he accidentally got poked in the eye. He couldn't see. He just let rid of the hands and he got the finish. Well, and when Alon Cruz beat Steven Wynn, I want to say it was about 30 seconds left in the third round. So, never know when you'll see a flying knee come. And we're creeping up on that 30 second mark right here. Relaying, cranking up the volume here. After losing that point for the eye poke. Something. I know Steven Wynn's corner. Wanted to see him do here in the third round. Yeah, and you know, for... Well, for both of these guys, but for Relayang more. You know, this isn't the end of the road. And he's going to lose this fight in 10 seconds. 
Um, it's just, you know, you stay the course, you stay on track, you still get back in the gym, you don't give up hope. Just because this will be the first loss of his professional career doesn't mean his journey as a fighter is over. But Steve Wynn, well done, a good performance. And let's take a look at some of that action. Here he is here, nice left hook. And this is predominantly how the fight went, him controlling him by the, the fence of the octagon, using his boxing, mixing in some kicks here and there. Nice hands, very technical boxing. Good. Right hand there. Of course, Wilayanga had some success predominantly from the takedowns. That was a really nice takedown there, good adjustment. Fires back there, catches win. There's a good uppercut left hook. And there's some more boxing there from Steve Wynn. Steve Wynn controlled the fight. Simple as that. I, I'd expect, well, actually, with the point deduction, 30-26. Yeah, I think you're probably right about on in terms of significant strikes. Almost doubled them up, did Steve Wynn. All right, let's bring in Yanni the Greek. Uh, how about some decision props here? Another one goes to decision here on the Contender Series. And the most probable outcome based on price was Steve Wynn by decision. Uh... And that was, excuse me, inside the distance at even money. And the win by decision was about plus 230. And those holding their breath on the Ray Liang side would get about a plus 600 ticket cash if he were to get it done by decision. That would have been a nice ticket had that come to fruition. Doesn't seem to be the uh, the case here tonight. Impressive performance from Stephen the Ninja Win from Wichita, Kansas in a extremely rare fight between two fighters uh vietnamese descent if when were to win the contract tonight he would be the only vietnamese fighter on the ufc roster all right let's send it to our octagon announcer justin bernard to make it official ladies and gentlemen after three rounds we go to the judges scorecards for decision the judges score the contest 29 27 29 27 and 30-26 for the winner by unanimous decision, Stephen Wynn! As expected, the Vietnamese...